are collateralized loan obligations or CLOs, Wall Street's next derivatives doomsday machine. So many of you are familiar with what happened in 2008. There was a bunch of derivatives. A lot of them were collateralized debt obligations or CDOs or mortgage-backed securities or MBS or collateralized mortgage obligations, CMOs, or credit default swaps, CDS. And these derivatives on top of subprime mortgages, on top which subprime was supposedly contained and then it spilled into regular mortgages and it caused just an immense problem. Warren Buffett labeled his quote about derivatives as, quote, derivatives are financial weapons of mass destruction. And, you know, Wall Street just basically can't help itself. So remember, I've been teasing recently in the last couple days. I was doing research for another show a couple days ago, and in search, I just randomly came upon a Federal Reserve research paper on the Federal Reserve website. I was not looking on the Federal Reserve website. I was searching for something else in a search engine, and this research paper popped up in search results from the Federal Reserve. And I'm not sure if I was supposed to see it or not, but apparently they put it out there. The research report, and I'll attach a link to it if you want to look at it, it's from July 19th of 2019, written by Emily Liu and Tim Schmidt Eisenlohr, and it's it's entitled, Who Owns U.S. CLO Securities? So it talks about an introduction to um, CLOs, collateralized loan obligations, and it talks about what they are. So I'll just read first the Investopedia definition of what a CLO is. And first of all, if you're not familiar with what derivatives are, um, the book by Michael Lewis, uh, The Big Short, explains it in an easier to understand way. So that's available on audiobook. There's also The Big Short movie, and that gives you a rough primer, pretty good primer on what derivatives are. And derivatives are enormous, and that's what caused a lot of the problems. It wasn't just housing prices falling. It was the leverage and the derivatives. So what is a collateralized loan obligation? A collateralized loan obligation, or CLO, is a single security backed by a pool of debt. Often these are corporate loans that have a low credit rating or leverage buyouts made by a private equity firm to make a controlling interest in an, in an existing company. A collateralized collateralized say that like five times fast, collateralized loan obligation is similar to a collateralized mortgage obligation or CMO, except that the underlying debt is of a different type and character, a company loan instead of a mortgage. With a CLO, let's just call it CLOs now, I don't want to read out the whole thing, the investor receives scheduled debt payments from the underlying loans, assuming most of the risk in the event that borrowers default. In exchange for taking on the default risk, the investor is often is excuse me is offered greater diversity and the potential for higher than average returns a default is when a borrower fails to make payments on a loan or mortgage for an extended period of time so how does a clo work loans usually first lien bank loans to businesses that are ranked below investment grade are initially sold to a CLO manager who bundles multiple, generally 100 to 225 loans together and manages the consolidations, actively buying and selling loans. To fund the purchase of new debt, the CLO manager sells stakes in the CLO to outside investors in a structure called tranches, very, very similar to how mortgage-backed securities were sold. Each tranche is a piece of the CLO and it dictates who will be paid out first when the underlying loan payments are made. It also dictates the risk associated with the investment since investors who are paid last have a higher risk of default from the underlying loans. So if you're a first-time investor, you get paid first. If you're in last, you risk not getting paid at all if the, if the uh, CLOs blow up, the tranche you're investing in. Investors who are paid, first, uh, paid out first have lower overall risk, but they receive smaller interest payments as a result. Investors who are in later tranches may be paid last, but the interest payments are higher to compensate for the risk. So the key takeaways um, in this Investopedia article, article summarizing CLOs, it's a single security backed by pool of debt. CLOs are often corporate loans with low credit ratings or leveraged buyouts made by private equity firms to take a controlling interest in a company. With a CLO, the investor receives scheduled debt payments from the underlying loans, assuming most of the risk if borrowers default. So I have a number of different articles that are beginners explaining this stuff and the rationale for why. But the bottom line is that these things are very, very dangerous. And it's now in vogue within the world of finance. ACLO is this, okay, 
These characteristics can be the dates on which the loans mature, the risk profile. CLOs have become popular due to the search among asset managers to generate high returns for their investors. The hunt for yield leading to crisis is a recurring theme in the banking sector. Bankers have an obligation to achieve returns for their investors. Moreover, if they outpace their benchmarks, they are rewarded with high fees, carried interest, and other compensation schemes. Unfortunately, we too often see bankers' financial incentives take priority over the best interests of their investors. So the CLO story is now a ticking time bomb. During the 2008 financial crisis, bankers had packaged up subprime mortgages into tranches, securities, and sold them to investors. These securities were called collateralized debt obligations, or CDOs. Mortgages were placed into, quote, senior and, quote, junior tranches, which differed, uh, differed in their interest rates and risk profiles. Junior tranches are the last to receive payback from the collateral in the event of a default. This makes them riskier, but also higher yield. While junior tranches are understood to be risky, improperly rated senior tranches led to the financial crisis. Ratings agencies like Moody's, S&P, and Fitch were negligent in their assessment of CDO risk. They assigned A ratings to senior tranches consisting of subprime mortgages that would ultimately go bust. A so-called, quote, safe investment, quote, wasn't safe at all. And the risk is misunderstood with these derivatives products. So... It's interesting that the General Electric story happened today. I see it in the comment section because I've been talking about General Electric for a year now and warning people about that with the first signs. And especially when we got the news in, what, November? The, I think it was November with General Electric where they had some real trouble and they, were, they got downgraded. They got a credit downgrade. But these CLOs, I have a chart there up there, and the CLOs, the amount of them, this is the first time I've seen it anywhere. I've done the searches for CLOs. I pulled up a bunch of articles, and you know what? This is the most up-to-date CLO chart you will find. You will not find this chart on Zero Hedge. You will not find it anywhere else unless you are a professional money manager on a Bloomberg terminal or maybe at a hedge fund and you're paying for expensive research. You will not find this chart for free because the only place I've seen this chart is directly in a Federal Reserve research paper that they just published a month ago. So that chart has showed that the amount of CLOs that the banks have issued and the other investment products divisions have issued has exploded now to over 600 billion dollars so it started off small i believe let me pull up the chart here i have a the charts out of focus because i had to fit it in the sources it shows the source material on the federalreserve.gov website where the research was compiled from so in 2008 the clo market was around 300 billion and it's increased a lot it's more than doubled in the last 10 years and that is because the wall street banks the ratings agencies are they're expecting bailouts they don't have to deal with the accounting problems that they did in the past because the accounting rules were change it changed and they can make a lot of commission off these products and the federal the federal reserve research paper it talks about the life stages of the clo and it also talks about the largest holders of the clo according to the tick data the treasury inter i was searching for treasury international capital tick data reports and that's how i found it so i was searching the tick data looking up who um foreign holders of u.s treasuries and this is how it, the research report came up so there are guys according to this federal reserve research paper that came out a month ago there are a lot of insurance companies that have been buying these clos there are a lot of bond mutual funds that have been buying these clos there are, are a lot of depository institutions that are buying these clos there are a lot of pension funds buying these clos the amount has has increased a lot in just the last like seven or eight years, desperate for yield. So institutional investors, including insurance companies, hold 24% of the CLOs, mutual funds hold 18%, pension funds hold, hold 11%. Um, so half of Cayman issued CLOs at year end 2017. And this ha includes research for 2018 as well. Um, the European CLO market has exploded. There's a chart that I have in the Wall Street for Main Street Facebook group of covenant light leveraged loans in europe as a share of total volume and they basically did not exist at all there was tiny amounts of them prior to 2011 and the graph has gone exponential now year to date so um in europe these things have been issued collateralized loan obligations and 
what this means is the companies in there the debt in there a lot of it is very very dangerous and very very risky and it could blow up at any time and it's kind of apropos that that the general electric stuff happened because general electric has a bad balance sheet they got their credit rating downgraded and there's a lot of garbage inside the clos that can have their their debt their credit rating downgraded too so let me um talk about the covenant light stuff let me pull it up and the, there's this is a pretty long article and there's a lot of citations in here so if you want to dig into this there may be this is not financial advice but if you could find who's holding the clos if there's any of these companies that are selling this stuff and stuck with it they could potentially go down in flames okay let me pull up the covenant light stuff from this uh, research report article I'll just read the whole thing. The U.S. leveraged loan market has grown substantially in recent years with more and more loans bought by CLOs. Despite the increasing importance of U.S. CLOs, information on the holders of U.S. CLO securities is very limited. Information on who owns CLOs is, however, essential for quantifying the full exposures or risk of investors to the leveraged loan market as indirect holdings through CLOs represent a growing share of the total. This note, the research report fills part of that gap, providing to their knowledge the first breakdown of CF CLO investors by location and by investor type. So according to the knowledge of the people that wrote this research report a month ago at the Federal Reserve, this is the first time anyone in the public sphere has tried to, to quantify who owns this garbage, the CLOs, that offer higher interest rate, higher yields with a lot more risk. So combining data from the Treasury International Capital Tick System and the Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association, SIFMA, we find that most U.S. CLOs are held by U.S. investors and that the holdings are concentrated in insurance companies. Remember, because insurance companies have been getting squeezed by financial repression and manipulation of bond markets by these major central banks. So they, can, they have to reinvest premiums and they have to get interest payments to reinvest to pay out insurance later insurance claims so insurance companies mutual funds and you know the more financial repression the more desperate either insurance companies or retirees or savers are desperate to grab yield mutual funds and depository institutions foreign holdings are limited as are holdings by hedge funds and other investment vehicles a primer on clos uh, clos are a class of securities backed by an underlying portfolio of corporate loans u.s clos are primarily backed by u.s dollar denominated leveraged loans typically to u.s firms although it looks like the european ones have exploded recently uh, since 2011 too the u.s clo market accounts for approximately half of u.s leveraged loans outstanding the U.S. CLO issuance outstanding has grown dramatically over the past several year, years, following a low in the market after the 2008 crisis, reaching $617 billion in 2008, the uh, Q4 of 2008. So that's a chart. It's starting to go up a lot, and I'm sure it's increased a lot in 2019. This research report is a month old. They don't have 2019 data yet. At the same, and again, if you there's a couple articles I found from Zero Hedge that don't have charts like this. So uh, Zero Hedge may be running the story or someone may want to send this to Zero Hedge with the CLOs. I did not see them cite the Fed research report that came out a month ago. At the same time, the composition of loans underlying the CLOs has shifted. Notably, the percentage of so-called, quote, and here's the, here's the ticking time bomb, guys. At the same time, the composition of loans underlying the CLOs has shifted. Notably, the percentage of so-called, quote, covenant light, end quote, loans in the leveraged loan market has grown substantially over time. Covenant light loans have no financial maintenance covenants, making them more like high yield bonds. So if you're not familiar with what that means with covenant light, this is worse than triple B rated bonds. And triple B is one step up above junk. And according to the Federal Reserve's own research, they're saying that this stuff, covenant light, means it's, vi it, it's either the debt covenants are very laxed, like it's a very easy to beat debt to EBITDA ratio or it's no covenant at all that these loans were sold in so this is the the corporate bond equivalent this stuff that was put in there of subprime this is very toxic shit and yet uh, uh, the purchases of this stuff has gone up and up and up and the Wall Street doomsday derivatives machine 
has sold this stuff to, for commissions to insurance companies, pension funds, I named the other holders. So the, if you're not familiar with the US corporate bond market, I have some charts here that I can talk about. The amount of leveraged loans with high debt to EBITDA ratios, this chart is, let me see, I can't, I don't see the source at the moment. This is in the Wall Street for Main Street Facebook group, but the amount of, um, since 2010, the amount of leveraged loans with high debt to EBITDA ratios has exploded. It looks like it's up eightfold, about eight, almost eightfold, with seven times or higher debt to EBITDA ratios. So uh, an enormous explosion with very bad financials. And with triple B rated bonds, this chart is courtesy. I have this in the Wall Street for Main Street Facebook group. I'm reading off that. This chart is courtesy of my buddy Michael Leibowitz and Lance Roberts over at Real Investment Advice. Michael Leibowitz does good work on the research work. He's a friend of the show locally, and he does good research work on the bond market. And the amount of triple B rated, rated bonds in the corporate bond market has exploded from the year 2000 to 2019. In the year 2000, triple B, which is one step above junk rating, triple B was barely above 20% of the total corporate bond market. Now it's above 40% as of June of 2019, according to the research from Real Investment Advice. So the big explosion, guys, is in triple B rated bonds. And according to Danielle DiMartino Booth, that she broke the story that a lot of these ratings agencies have been threatened or bribed or come under tremendous pressure to not downgrade these large corporations like General Electric, like many others that have way over borrowed in debt. And some of them are even committing accounting fraud like General Electric, which is a story that dropped today. And these companies should, in a more transparent and more realistic world, they should be downgraded below uh, below triple B. So triple B is one step above junk debt. And it looks like a lot of this debt, this covenant light debt, has been put into CLO garbage. So CLO garbage has exploded, and this looks like a very large ticking time bomb. I tried to look to see if there were additional derivatives on CLOs, if there were derivatives on top of derivatives, and I could not find that yet. Oh, I got two super, three super chats. Excellent. Thank you, Dan, for the super chat. Thank you, Adam, for the super chat. Thank you, Jesse, for the super chat. Dan says, where do you see U.S. housing market going in the next few years? So in the short term, housing prices could have a correction, but there's a lot of money outside the United States whether that's from Europe or flight capital elsewhere or money from China that wants to come in here and still views the U.S. as a better deal and is safer to other, other markets and wants to buy U.S. real estate. And it's in the incentives. I've talked about this at length now for over a year. It's in the incentives for the U.S. Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve to not let housing prices fall because, number one, they need capital gains tax revenue on how on higher housing prices at least in nominal value and number two they need the state and local governments need that property taxes to go up so until the system blows up with this fiat currency and credit bubble that the global economy finds itself in i i am very wary of predicting lower housing prices for a long period of time let me put it that way it is in the perverse incentives of the the bankers, the central bankers, the treasury departments, the governments to move housing prices higher. I hope that explained that well for you, Dan. So the incentive structure in place is in nominal value, not counting a real inflation rate, to force housing prices higher. In the short, now if you have cash and the housing prices collapsed, uh, this is not financial advice. You could be like my friend, Dr. Mark Faber, who had a lot of cash on the sidelines and he bought a lot of good pro rental properties in Atlanta and Phoenix and other cities and states in the United States um, in 2008 and 2009. He got a lot of good deals and he's done very, very well for himself for that. So uh, a lot of people criticize Dr. Mark Faber, um, especially in the mainstream financial media, but they don't understand how, how smart of a contrarian investor this guy is. He was speculating on Bitcoin at 3000 and I think he sold um, in January of this year, and I think he sold uh, he sold a good amount of his position already for a fourfold profit. So he's very good at what he does as a contrarian speculator and contrarian investor. So the, the CLOs, I don't remember the exact number of how much uh, mortgage-backed securities they were. I don't remember offhand. 
I have so many windows open right now. I could probably, if you give me a second, I could probably just look up. You guys will hear me typing, but I could probably look up the total number of uh, total size of. Okay, let me see. It. Yeah, I'm pulling up. Nope, that doesn't say it there. I'm still looking for total size of mortgage-backed securities. We'll see. We'll see if it, I'm. I'm assuming it was quite a bit larger than the CLO market. But this is this is bad. The CLOs because if there is downgrades from triple B below, there a lot of the CLOs from what it sounds like just reading some articles and reading this Federal Reserve research paper and I'll attach links to all these articles in the information and description section under the video after this live stream shows over. But the CLO stuff, the le the uh, coverage light that's in the CLOs or high debt to EBITDA ratio in the CLOs, it sounds like it's way worse than even triple B. Yeah, I can't find it right now. I have a research report open. It's going to take some time to go through the exact number, the total size of mortgage-backed securities. If anyone, if anyone knows it offhand, you can put it in the, you can put it in the live chat section. Someone put five trillion. I don't know offhand if that's right. It was a lot. There was there was a lot of derivatives on top of derivatives. There was credit default swaps sold on stuff that shouldn't have been sold. I think there was credit default swaps sold and the banks didn't have reserves to pay off the credit default swaps. It was a big mess. So this is what happens. Number one, Wall Street is desperate for fees, so they're going to sell this garbage. But number two, you have the central banks manipulating interest rates down and people are desperate for yields. Insurance companies, pension funds, pension funds, a lot of pension fund managers and pension fund boards, investment boards are not exactly smart money. So if someone comes to them telling them that they can earn 6% per year, even if it's risky, like shale oil, junk bond debt, or these collateralized loan obligations, these uh, pension funds, a lot of them will bite, will bite on it. Unfortunately, you know, a more seasoned professional money manager would say, oh, hell no, I'm not touching this stuff. But desperation for income is normally what, or a slick salesman from Wall Street or a hedge fund Wall Street Investment Bank or a hedge fund or a private equity is what will normally con a less experienced financial person or non-financial professional into buying this junk. So you see the yield, the yield potential, but you don't realize the risk. Um, CLOs were actually around prior to 2008. They just weren't that popular. So the corporate bond market has actually exploded in size. It's um, doubled. It's about doubled. I think now the corporate bond market is now around $11 trillion total. And the triple B and junk debt make up a large chunk of that. The triple B rated and junk bond debt make up a lar an increasingly larger chunk of the total corporate bond market. So you won't find this on Zero Hedge. Um, there are there are uh, CLO articles from Zero Hedge. Uh, there's an article I found two CLO articles from Zero Hedge. There was one from 2017 called "CLOs quote safe CDOs in air quotes are booming again," and then there's a more recent one from February saying Fitch warns of quote coming storm and quote for CLOs the Fitch Ratings Agency but they don't have the chart here that I have that I that you guys are seeing now they don't have that saying that the 
CLO market is now over $600 billion. I suspect uh, this chart will end up on zero hedge probably in the next week. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't have this uh, research report from the Federal Reserve because you'd think that they have people monitor monitoring the Federal Reserve releasing research reports like this. So the Fed is aware of the problem in CLOs. They're just not trying to put it out. They're aware of the problem because the research report is on their website from a month ago and they said that they pulled data that's not been released publicly. This is a good question by Play on Stereo. Will the Fed and who's EBC? You mean e European Central Bank buy CLOs in nominal price? Yes. That would be my educated guess that if um, an insurance company blew up or a pension fund needed a bailout or the banks got stuck with the hot potato, so the game of musical chairs ended and the banks got stuck with this stuff on their balance sheet and it blew up and it went to zero, um, I could see, this is hypothetical, not financial advice, I could see the banks um, needing this stuff bought again by the Fed. And not only, and I've stressed this at length, not only does the Fed have to buy a lot of U.S. Treasury soon, so not only does the Fed have to buy an enormous amount of U.S. Treasury soon, theoretically the Fed may have to buy all of this $600 billion in CLO garbage. All of it. And you know what? There's no signs from the research paper and elsewhere, there's no signs that the CLO market, the sales of this garbage, has stopped. So I could see the Fed having to increase their balance sheet by many, many trillions in the next couple years if the CLO market blows up and they have to start buying massive amounts of treasuries. But this goes back to, you know, the Harry Marco Polos. Um, if you have not seen it yet, I highly recommend Harry um, today the interview that Harry Marco Polos did on Yahoo Finance. It's about 14 minutes long. And if you're not familiar with what happened earlier today, Harry Marco Polos, who was the whistleblower in the Bernie Madoff fraud, he knew 10 years before anyone else. Excellent book. One of my favorite books. No one would listen. It's available on audiobook. It's a great story. It's sad. It's interesting. It's exciting. It's suspenseful. It's really sad about the lack of transparency and injustice in our system. And he figured out he was a math genius and also an accounting wizard at a hedge fund. And his boss told him to repeat Bernie Madoff's investment strategy. And he figured out in 10 minutes with reverse engineering and running the math that Bernie Madoff was running a Ponzi scheme. And he compiled all this research with a team of his friends and absolutely no one would listen to him. No financial, no one in the financial media, no one in the no one um, in the government, the SEC at the Boston office, the SEC at the New York office did an absolutely poor job of mishandling this. And he thought that the case would be buried when it finally came crashing down on Madoff. He thought that all of his research and work would be uh, buried because it would make the SEC, both Boston office and New York City office of the SEC look bad. And so Harry Markopoulos was on. He's a whistleblower. He's a certified fraud examiner now. And um, he goes through the SEC um, whistleblower program. So if he reports a fraud, he eventually gets paid for reporting accounting fraud or some other types of fraud. And he just dropped a 175-page research report on General Electric detailing over a decade of accounting fraud, massive accounting fraud. And I was worried about General Electric member last year. And there was other people, other financial experts, other hedge fund managers I was talking to who are telling me some of the details about problems with General Electric's financial statements and other problems last year. So he says that there's other accounting frauds like that. Um, we'll see what happens with General Electric. It sounds like General Electric was tipped off that Harry Markopoulos handed over all this documents to like the Department of Justice and the federal agency because the... The chief financial officer, General Electric, resigned, I think, before Harry Markopoulos went public. So if there is accounting scandals, if there is downgrades from triple B lower than that, 
some of the CLOs could start to blow up. And it sounds like a lot of this stuff in the CLOs are below triple B already. They're covenant light. But I would argue that a lot of stuff that's rated triple B by the ratings agencies, the ratings agencies are either corrupt or stupid or lazy, that the ratings agencies um, are complicit in all this. Very, very complicit. And that's why they won't downgrade. Danielle DiMartino Booth has talked about this. She's interviewed uh, current and former people inside the three major ratings agencies, and they talk about just enormous pressure, constant pressure from the corporate executives, the chief financial officers of these companies. So even if more debt is added, even if um, more leveraged buyouts or share buybacks with debt are done, to not downgrade the debt from triple B below triple B. Uh, I know nothing about Jeff Gunlock and GE. I can't comment on that. But Jeff Jeff Gunlock was predicting a steepening yield curve, so he was wrong on that. So props to Hedgeye and Stanley Druckenmiller, who predicted um, the Japanification and the yield curve going more inverted. Tomcat, more reasons why big government doesn't work exactly. So here we are, guys, at at least $600 billion in the CLO market, which was much, much smaller. And now the CLO stuff is going to start probably, even though they're still selling more of it and the amount of it in Europe has exploded, this stuff is going to blow up at some point. It's a question of when and not if. Yeah, if you could, if you like the video, if you could put your li uh, click on like, that would be great. I have over 90 Patreon account contributors now, guys, so thank you very much. You're allowing me to start to reinvest into my company and do the things that I should have been doing a long time ago. So the more people that step up, the more likely it will be that uh, the content can improve. You know, if I would have had another business partner too, a lot of these problems, I'm doing literally everything by myself and I'm pretty burned down and overwhelmed at this point. I think I've taken one or two days off in the last couple months. I've just been uh, burning the candle at both ends. I've... My health problems have been giving me some problems. I was supposed to interview Art Berman today at a reschedule. I was not feeling well a couple hours ago. I was feeling very, very sick. But I was feeling better enough to hop on and give this live stream show for you guys. Yeah, so thank you very much. I'm not going to spend like five minutes listing all my Patreon account contributors. No one, Most people don't want to hear me do that. So thank you very much to the 90 plus people, almost 100 now, who are my Patreon account contributors. Hopefully you won't cancel after a month. That happens with some people. I know times are tough and everyone can't afford to pay. If you can chip in once in a while and send a donation through my website, wallstreetformeanstreet.com, if you can chip in once in a while and send you know, a few bucks my way, that would be fine. You don't have to chip in every month. Or, or if you have no money at all, you could just click like. That's fine too. Yeah, so this is all coming to a head, guys, in the next couple years, and the days of the Federal Reserve being able to reduce their balance sheet are over. They're going to have to, this, this CLO stuff, from what it sounds like, I've been reading a number of articles just today and yesterday and the day before when I found this research report from the Federal Reserve, and hopefully this gets to zero hedge now, but... um. It sounds like this thing's going to blow up in the next couple years, and this is just going to be another thing that the Federal Reserve is going to have to expand their balance sheet for, create more fiat currency out of, out of thin air to help. Okay, I'm looking at listener questions and comments. I have these other uh, articles about either basic definitions of what a CLO is, if you want to go more in depth. And then I have the two zero hedge ones. And then there's one from a year, almost exact, literally a year ago from Bloomberg that CLOs are the new hedge funds plan accordingly. The latest hot investment won't be foolproof. So the corporate bond market is a is one of the four or five largest economic landmines out there besides like European banks and European government bond debt, stuff like that. And then also like emerging markets and China. 
Now I think a new one might be HSBC. There's a lot of red flags around HSBC, and they're not the same types of red flags with Deutsche Bank. It looks like there's a lot of people that want HSBC to go down. Oh, thank you for the couple extra super chats. Ammonite, Tarquinus K. What's in it for GDX and GDXJ? Probably just normal profit taking. Uh, there's been a few capital raises from some of the miners. Eventually, these things will probably go higher. If you own, this is not financial advice, but if you own individual mining stocks, I would be very careful right now because we're at a gold price where some of these mining companies, I just spoke to Nolan Watson this week where some of these, not with an interview, but um, he thinks that there's some mining companies that can raise $100 million or more in capital raises soon at this gold price. So some of these mining companies, if you look at how many shares they have outstanding in their market cap, some of these mining companies could dilute 10% or 20%, some of them even more than that. Uh, thank you, Sean, for the kind words. I don't think Peter Schiff's going to buy me out because I don't think him and I are on the same page about China. And I think he, he hires mostly yes men at his company. I think just because him and I have a very different opinion on China, I don't think um, he, he would want me to work for him. Knowing what I know now, and I have these really detailed hedge fund research reports about Chinese companies and fraud and accounting fraud and all these other crazy things, and all the, the, the regulators and government officials knowing about the fraud and in some cases encouraging it, knowing what I know now, I would not put in seeing the China Hustle documentary. I've done a lot of research on China, guys. There's people like, you don't know anything about China. I've interviewed the China experts. I've read China books, China articles, a lot of it. I don't know everything about China, but I know a lot, and I'm constantly learning. I put in probably over 100 hours of learning about the Chinese economy just in the last like 8 to 12 months. But knowing what I know now, all the totality of facts and things that I've gathered about the Chinese government, the Chinese economy, until things change in China with like accounting, the uh, if accounting fraud was removed and private property rights and things like that, I would not put another dollar into investing in a Chinese company. Things would have to change dramatically for me to change my mind. And speaking of that, I mean, if you're if you're claiming to be Austrian school and libertarian, don't tell me that I know nothing about China and that I'm a moron. And don't defend China for a lot of the actions the government is doing. Okay, there was there was this one guy who yesterday he was um he was complaining. This this guy has a history of complaining. I'll call him out because I I blocked him because he was calling me names and it was just ridiculous. But this guy's a freeloader too. So this guy would literally he was a European gentleman. He would literally uh, that he was libertarian Austrian school and then he would liber literally complain. After I would do like an, a four hour video, one of those slide deck videos or an eight hour video and say it wasn't good enough. He would list all the mistakes I did. He would tell me I need to do more of these free videos with that take four hours, eight hours work. I would tell him, are you a Patreon contributor? He's like, he's like, fuck you. I'm not giving you any money. And so, you know, I, I was paying attention to these guys comments. And then finally yesterday he called, he said like, you're a China basher. You know nothing about China. And then he's like, I'm never giving you a cent. He's like, I'm going to unsubscribe from your channel because I'm tired of hearing this bullshit. And I was like, dude, you know nothing about China. You're not really a libertarian. You're defending a authoritarian government. You, if you know anything about Austrian school of economics, you would know that they've misallocated trillions of dollars in capital. Bye bye. I don't want to hear you complaining anymore. You're done, dude. No, I just think he was brainwashed by Peter Schiff because I have, look, I, I respect Peter Schiff. I think he's a brilliant guy. He knows Austrian school economics well, but I literally now a couple day, a couple times per week, people literally repeat all the China talking points from Peter Schiff to me, whether it's in the Wall Street for Main Street, Facebook fan page or elsewhere. They literally repeat the same China talking points that Peter Schiff has been repeating for the last decade. 
acting as if nothing in China has changed. And this guy who I blocked, who was annoying and a cheapskate listener, and I realize uh, not everyone financially can contribute to my Patreon. That's fine. You can put like, but this guy was annoying and complaining and just ridiculous and insulting me. Don't do that. Don't do that. I spent eight hours on some of those videos and then he's like, you need to make more of these for free and then maybe your channel will be bigger. Or he's like, this wasn't good enough. What's wrong with you? Why can't you do this all the time? Of course I won't give you any money. You're a moron. Just ridiculous. Look, no government is doing a good job right now. The U.S. is a mess. QE is going to have to restart soon. In fact, if if I was a treasury secretary with below 2% 30-year treasuries, I'd be like, damn, let's sell a couple trillion dollars. If I was the treasury, hypothetically, if I was the treasury secretary and the yields on 30-year treasury were below 2%, you'd want to sell as much 30-year debt as you could. Oh, I'm just telling you guys how, how ridiculous some people are. They insult, they complain. They expect, like, a five-star steakhouse restaurant quality stuff for free. It's just ridiculous. If I would have debated this guy in China, I would have destroyed him in about five minutes. He knows absolutely nothing. And that's why the stock market's not doing well. That's why the yield curve's not doing well. Capital is coming in from the emerging markets, Europe, and China to the U.S. because the, the economic data, like I said, was slowing down a lot in China. Even the National Bureau of Statistics, Statistics of China, the data looked bad, which means the real data was probably even worse. And that vindicates the poor Chinese economics professor who released that stuff in China, while he was still in China in December. I hope the guy's okay. Nowadays, telling the truth comes with big consequences. What happened to Liberland? I don't know, man. Uh, wasn't uh, Peter Thiel also supposed to create like a floating city with yachts or something? I know that was being talked about like seven years ago. It depends if military force is used in Hong Kong. It depends if people die on and it's recorded on smartphone cameras or the news. Yeah, Schiff, Peter Schiff woke me up too. Peter Schiff woke me up too and I thank him very much for it. But that doesn't mean he can, he's right on everything. Sean says all these old legacy companies were raped by private equity firms. Some of that is true. They also did really dumb leverage buyouts where they took on a lot of debt and they made a bad acquisition. Like General Electric was projecting enormous cash flows from their Baker Hughes acquisition and another healthcare acquisition. And both those acquisitions that projected cash flows that, that, that they were hoping for never materialized. And I think General Electric has had to do tens of billions of dollars in write downs. So if you listen to Harry Markopoulos, that General Electric has over $40 billion in bad asset write downs, which is enormous. And then they took on debt to do that. And then they took on billions of dollars in debt for share buybacks too. So this is this, the management team of this company did an absolutely horrible job of allocating capital, of maintaining a solid balance sheet for over a decade. Um, these derivatives are a ticking time bomb. I don't know about a Ponzi scheme, but they're a ticking time bomb. It's a hot potato. So no one wants to be stuck. No one wants to be stuck in a game of musical chairs without a chair. No one wants to be stuck in hot potato with the hot potato. That's how these um, derivatives products work. And the goal is to is to dump them onto the pension funds, dump them to dumber money or people desperate for yield, and maybe they get paid some yield, and then eventually the the underlying assets in air quotes in the 
and these derivatives go bad, and then the yield stops being paid. Same as the mortgage-backed securities, very similar. Um, I didn't see Harry Marco Polos on, on uh, CNBC. He might have been on. I saw him on Yahoo Finance. And they were grilling him hard. They were trying to bring up that he's biased. They were obviously trying to defend General Electric. I don't agree with everything Kyle Bass says about China, but I think Kyle Bass is more right about China than Peter Schiff. Let's leave it at that. Now, 10 years ago, Peter Schiff was right about China. Okay, I was a big China bull 10 years ago. 10 years ago, if you looked at China's uh, government debt, their corporate debt, they had very little debt. Things have changed a lot in 10 years in China. Things are totally different 10 years ago than 10 years ago in China. Very, very different. 10 years ago, China did not have $40 trillion credit bubble. Plus, over $40 trillion in credit bubble. They did not have a dollar denominated debt problem. They did not have all those problems. Exactly, Anthony. I don't agree with everything anyone says. This is exactly, but a lot of people want to find their one or two experts and agree with them on everything, and it, that makes their life easier. But that's not how life works. So I have the main Federal Reserve article on CLOs. I have a couple basic beginner's articles explaining what CLOs are. I have the two zero hedge articles and a one or two Bloomberg articles and then another one from the data-driven investor explaining how risky CLOs are. Oh, Japanese banks also hold billions of dollars in CLOs too, according to this article from the data-driven investor. So this stuff was a lot of, a lot of people desperate for yield bought this stuff. Um, but yeah, but a lot of those total derivatives, though, first of all, that number has come down a lot of the, the majority of those total derivatives outstanding. The gross amount is interest rate swaps and the European interest rate swaps actually went negative for the first time. I was going to do a short video on that. I don't know if I believe that 542.4 trillion number. The initial gross estimates for total derivatives was a quadrillion over a quadrillion. So I don't know how they could have come down by half. Um, I think a lot of Japanese money managers, Anthony, I think they prefer to buy a lot of investments outside of Japan. So they buy Japanese government bonds, and then when it comes to any other types of stocks or yield investments, they like buying a lot of other stuff out of Japan. They seem to have very high risk appetites out of Japan. Why is the euro so strong with Deutsche Bank and the German economy near recession and the ECB going to do, to do QE in September? Because I think the market is starting to price in. This is a good question. I think the market's starting to price in that the Federal Reserve will do rate cuts in QE soon, too. Um, Jesse, the yen carry trade, I don't know if it supports the yen because Japan actually has a very large amount of dollars in treasuries. Um, Japan has more treasuries now than China. Because China's been selling treasuries for dollars because they need the dollars to pay off dollar-denominated debt and to buy food and energy and other commodities. But um, the yen carry trade, in my opinion, the yen carry trade takes all that monetary inflation and credit and it keeps it out of the Japanese economy and prevents hyperinflation inside the Japanese economy. And then it creates asset bubbles and credit bubbles in other countries. So the yen carry trade, Japan wants that. So other investment banks and hedge funds and private equity will borrow in yen and take that created monetary inflation and credit that has been created in Japan and it exports it into other asset markets. Yeah, it makes sense, Jesse, that you can borrow yen at negative to buy dollar. Japan's been doing Japanification and manipulating interest rates lower with financial repression and ZERP and NERP or close to it for longer than anyone else. That is why Japan now, the Japanese government bond market, a 1% increase in interest rates blows everything up.
So according to Harry Markopoulos, there are lots of other corporate frauds out there. He said there's even ones with um, market caps over $100 billion. And he says there's a few of them with market caps over $100 billion that his team, it took them seven months, over seven months of research to compile all the data and the accounting fraud in great detail on General Electric. And he said that his team is now working. They just released that report publicly and that they're now working on uh, additional research reports on other publicly traded companies that are committing similar accounting fraud in the market cap range of like 20 billion to 60 or 70 billion. And I was warning people about this for a while, but I don't think the fraud in a lot of aspects is nearly as bad as a lot of the accounting fraud in China because some of these businesses in China don't even exist or the assets are overestimated by tenfold. And people will go to prison, in the U.S. at least. I know the court system is not as good as it should be here in the U.S., but at least there is some criminal charges that will be brought. Enron, people, some people did go to prison in Enron, and there was the ability with civil lawsuits and class action lawsuits to recoup some of the money. So the Bernie Madoff victims here in the U.S., they did get, I believe they did get all their original investment back, but if they put in their money into Madoff like 20 years ago, they they then did not get any of the investment returns over the last 20 years that they thought. But they did get their original principal back. Yeah, I don't think Brexit is that big a deal because the English economy is, is not that big. The only thing that Brexit will hurt the most, in my opinion, Brexit will hurt the, the banks, the European banks or the, the English banks that were getting all the tax-free stuff out of London. A lot of the London banks are allowed to manipulate markets and make enormous profits there, and they have either little or no taxes. They have big tax ex exemption status, and normally the banks then would just find another country to go uh, park to get similar benefits. So that would hurt probably London real estate, unless the Saudis and Chinese want to come in there and buy more. But the bankers who are buying a lot of that London real estate, then they would probably sell and move somewhere else. That's just my opinion. Yeah, China definitely doesn't want Trump reelected at all. Yeah, bank bankers should have went to jail in 2008. They should have. They should have, but the uh, Obama administration, George W. Bush, and then the Obama administration after that took over after, they did a very poor job of things. Both political parties deserve enormous criticism for that. But the banks control the banks control through lobbying and political donations both major political parties. Okay, guys. Well, this is a lot longer than I planned, and I'll put links to all these articles in the information section. I'm gonna go relax now. This show was too long. I need a break. Okay, bye. If bye for now, everyone.